Hello everybody, how's it going? It's Thursday. I'm here in my craft room coming to you live from my stamp room with my coffee. And I have a fun layout that I'm gonna be honest, I haven't put it together. This is gonna be on the fly stamping as my friend uh, France Martin um, ta always says. She refers to it when she stamps on the fly. Um, just like we're gonna just, I have an idea in my head. It hasn't come together yet, but I'm excited to use two uh, Christmas stamp sets that I've had since September and I haven't had a chance to play with them yet. So I'm excited to uh, pull these out and make a scrapbook layout that I'm gonna use for my own family pictures. So if you're joining me, I'd love to know you're with me. Let me know, say hi, give me a like or a thumbs up. I always appreciate your interaction with me here on my Facebook Live. Hi, Linda. Good morning. <laughs> Good morning, Patty. Thanks for coming back to join me, ladies. I appreciate that. How is everybody doing? Are you getting things done for Christmas despite what's going on right now? Are you figuring out how to move about safely and gather your things and get things done for Christmas? Um, you know, we just got to deal with what we have right now and uh, stay positive and stay hopeful. And uh, that is my wish for you guys is that you uh, know, you realize that this is a temporary time and that we will all be okay. And that's kind of how I'm getting through this is that I'm taking the advantage of my time here to create and to make scrapbook layouts and Christmas cards and I'm having a ball. I really am. I'm having so much fun sharing all of this with you. And this week I am focusing on scrapbook pages. So, hi Jean Ann, Jean A. Sorry, there's a Jean Ann and then there's a Jean A and I don't wanna get you guys mixed up. So Jean A, Stacy is with us. Hi G, Jean. <laughs> uh, hi Amanda, good morning. Thanks for joining me. Okay, so let's flip the camera. I've got some, I got a lot of stuff on my desk today. Two stamp sets, paper, cardstock, blends, ink pads, you name it, it's on my desk. <laughs> Sometimes we have to make a mess before we can, to make pretty things, right? We do have to pull everything out and then uh, tidy up afterwards. That's the tricky part. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Hi, Zara. Thanks for joining me. I'm super excited <laughs> to have you with me. And uh, so we're gonna flip the camera and I'm gonna show you what I've got to share today. Okay, let me put my coffee down over here so I don't spill that. <laughs> okay, so here we go. Bear with me while I flip my camera. It's gonna take a couple seconds here to flip and to show you my work surface. Let me get you all straightened up. Look at all the stuff I've got on my desk, you guys. Oh my heavens, it's a messy. It's messy today, but that's okay. Like I said, we have to make a mess before we make it better, right? Yep. I'll just drive this around a little bit until I get it straight. I know this says November up here, ladies, but this is my current host code. It's not closed yet. So I'm gonna close it today. Tomorrow you will see a new one up there. So if you are interested in purchasing from my online store, head over to my blog at rosecoleman.com. At the top, you'll see the little, some little uh, lines you can click on there to shop from my online store. I appreciate your order. I appreciate you choosing me as your demonstrator. And I will send you a pack of rhinestones for every $50 order you, you uh, place in the month of December. That is with this host code. Okay, so let's get started. I have two stamp sets I'm gonna to feature today. I have Don't Stop Believing. look at this one. This is a keeper, you guys. Look at this adorable Santa face, and that elf just makes me laugh every time I see him wrapped up with those Christmas lights. <laughs> I love that one. So Don't Stop Believing, and I also have Christmas Means More. Now this is a photopolymer stamp set, which if you're new to Stampin' Up, we have two types of stamps. So this is photopolymer, clear stamps. You can see right through, makes it so easy for stamping. You can see what you're doing. Um, our classic stamp set, uh, st st stamp style is the red rubber. This is where it started with Stampin' Up! And this stamp set here is the red cling. Cling mount is what it's called because it is super sticky. It clings, right? So that's why they call it cling mount. So we're going to play with both of those today. I think they both fit nicely together, the greetings and the beautiful images. And we're going to make a scrapbook layout because it's all about scrapbooking this week. So I, pro I brought in a um, package of designer series paper that is my favorite one from the mini catalog. 
and it is I'm just reaching for my catalog here it is in this catalog that is current until January 4th we can order from here it's called the heartwarming hugs okay so the heartwarming hugs designer series paper we're gonna play with that today I've got some other fun things down here that I'm gonna show you we're gonna make a layout a scrapbook layout so the heartwarming hugs paper I have shown it several times here on my Facebook group and I have these patterns chosen for my layout today. I don't have them cut yet, but we're going to do this on the fly, like my friend Frenchie says, <laughs> on the fly. And uh, we're going to put this together. So to do scrapbooking, I am a traditional 12 by 12 scrapbooker. So what that means is I use a background cardstock that measures 12 by 12. Stampin' Up! sells Whisper White in 12 by 12 and Very Vanilla in multi-pack. says that I'm pausing. Okay. It just told me that I have a connection error and that I, I paused, so I hope I'm still live. You guys, give me a thumbs up if I'm still live. I may have some issues today. I hope not. Fingers crossed we can get through this layout. <laughs> okay, so I've got my paper here. And the way I like to start off my layouts is, of course, with my designer suit, with my background paper. So I've got a piece of Whisper White. So the first thing I'm going to do is title. I, I love to start off with the title, right? So I'm going to put my title up here in the left top left-hand corner. I've cut a piece of the designer series paper at four inches. I chose this pattern. I really, really like this pattern. I'm going to put that up here on the top of my layout. And I want to bring in some die cuts. So I want to show you first. This is the package that I use for many of the die cutting that I did today. I did do some pre-cutting of some... Uh, layers and this is from the hippo happiness they're called hippo and friends dies now this is tucked away in the annual catalog and it's paired with a gorgeous little stamp set with hippos and uh but if, when you buy it as a bundle you save 10 percent, or you can just buy the bundle if you wanted to because it has some really nice layering dies here so i've cut the largest of this shape that's going to be my title, and it's going to be up here in the left-hand side. Hi, Heidi. Thanks for joining me. So that's going to go up there, and we're going to stamp on there. So let's go ahead and bring in our stamp set. So my title of my page is going to be this one. Maybe Christmas perhaps means a little bit more. I love that because this is totally, totally um, great for scrapbooking because then you can put whatever pictures of your Christmas, what your Christmas is going to look like on this page, right? So we're going to put this onto a block. I'm just going to bring in my big block here. This is block E. I love block E because it gives me lots of surface area to put big stamps on and big stamps are great when you're scrapbooking because you want to have a nice big bold greeting or a bold image and we're going to stamp that on here. Let's move this off to the side. And we're going to stamp with uh, Memento. So I brought, brought my Memento in. Now, I want to show you the Memento is a smaller ink pad than my stamp. So what I like to do with that, I'm going to lay my stamp down on my desk. I'm going to ink it from the top. So I'm just going to take my Memento in my hand, and I'm just going to ink it all across the top like this, making sure I can take a peek and make sure that I've covered it all with ink and now here we go we can stamp this onto this layer and give it a second for that ink to leave the stamp and go into the cardstock and I just like to press around this the the back of the block here and make sure it's all good and I'm just using my fingernail to pull that off and there we have it doesn't that fit on there perfectly I just love 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 this greeting Okay, so you could use this on a front of a Christmas card easy enough, and then you really, this would take up, you know, uh, pretty much the whole front of a, a Christmas card, so you could bling the rest of it up with some de designer series paper, some punches, super easy. Okay, so that's going to be my title. So let's grab some dimensionals, and we're going to put this onto my page. We'll just do one piece at a time here. So I'm going to add four dimensionals to the back of this. And we'll put this onto my layout in one second, actually, because I'm going to put the designer series paper down first. I'm going to use some multi-purpose glue, go all the way around here, and we'll put this up at the top of my page. 
like this. I'm going to go all the way to the edge of my Whisper White and cover the top of my scrapbook page. Okay, so before I put this down, it'll look great over, over here. I want to put something on the background here. So with this suite, there's some Mossy Meadow ribbon, the diagonal striped ribbon. I'm going to add a bit of that underneath. So I'm going to use, you can use um, some tape runner or you can use scotch tape. I do keep, keep scotch tape in my craft room um, for this purpose to attach ribbon. So I'm going to just grab my scissors and snip this. I just want it to be a little bit longer than my page. And oops, I'm going to put my pin back in my ribbon so it doesn't unravel all over my desk. And we're gonna flip this over and just attach the ribbon at the back with scotch tape. And this will make it easier too, like when I'm sliding my um, this into a page protector, it won't have glue all over the back. You know, I don't like that. So it makes it a nice clean layer when you do it with, when you put it down with scotch tape. Okay, so there we go, we've got our ribbon on there. Now you could put a little bit of glue or a couple of glue dots if you want it secured at the front, but I'm okay with that. I'm just going to leave it like that. Also from the Heartwarming Hug Suites, we have these glitter star ornaments. And obviously I need to order another package because I've gone through these. But these little ornaments are gorgeous. They're so sweet. And they already come with this metallic thread on them. So good morning, Julie. Thanks for joining me. So they're perfect for hanging on your tree if you wanted to or making your own ornaments. But I'm gonna put one right here on my layout. I really like how that um, adds some bling to my layout. And what I'm gonna do is just take my scissors and I could have strung this on, probably that would have been the better way of doing it, strung it onto the ribbon before I secured it at the back, but no big deal. I'm just gonna slip it on here and grab some glue dots and I'm gonna secure that down. Okay, so I'm just gonna grab a couple of glue dots here and put them onto this. I think one will actually be fine. I'm just gonna put one glue dot and I'm gonna put the star in place so that it stays put. And then I'm just gonna retie that knot up here at the top. So you can do that. You can tie it. I'm gonna secure it so that it looks like it's hanging from this piece of ribbon. And there we go. Just tie it in a knot. If I can get my fingers to work. <laughs> Why is it on Facebook Live that everything seems like all the little stuff is so hard to do? Because <laughs> somebody's watching you, right? Whenever somebody's watching you, it's always hard to do. Okay, so let's trim that off. So there, we have our little star around there. I love that. Nice little embellishment. So we've got our title. I'm going to put that over here. And I stamped it in memento, but there is some holly berries and some leaves. So I'm going to just bring in quickly, bring in my blends and color those, add a little bit of color. So I've got real red dark here. I'm going to use the sharp point and color the holly berries on here. And then I've got my old olive and I'm going to color a good little bit of greenery. So just add a little tiny bit of color to my title. Okay, so this is my, my left side of my page. So we're gonna add some more layers here. Um, the stamp set, let me just grab my, my stamp. I've got the, the Santa face already mounted here. Let me just tidy up here so that I can find what I'm looking for. I've got that stamp set I just showed you. The one with all the Yes, this one. Don't stop believing. Don't stop believing. So this is the Santa face. I've got him mounted onto a block. And I went ahead and I used my rectangle stitched, stitched rectangle dies, and I cut a mossy meadow, meadow layer. Let me move this up so maybe I'm, hopefully I'm still on the screen here. And that's going to sit down here. Now I have a whisper white piece and see, I just love the way these dies layer together. So this is a whisper white stitched piece. I'm gonna stamp my Santa right there. 
So before I stick anything down, I'm going to stamp him. You know why I do that, right? Because if I make a mistake, <laughs> I can cut myself another piece of cardstock. I, I normally would flip my cardstock over, but when something is um, stitched, I don't really like to do that because if I hold this, I don't have to ink that again, but let me show you. If I hold this close to the camera, you can see that the stitches are beautiful on the front. On the back, they don't look as finished. So if I were to make a mistake with this piece of cardstock, I would cut myself another one just because I'm fussy like that. But you know, the back is still nice. It still has some stitching on it. It just doesn't look as good. So that's just my little tip about stitching. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna stamp the Santa here on the on this Whisper White. I'm gonna stamp him kind of close to the top. And again, you wanna give, give your stamp a little minute here to um, press all the way around so you get all, get all the ink off. Oh yeah, I really like that. He's so nice. So he's gonna stay there. Also in the stamp set, there is a stamp that says, don't stop believing. So I think that's perfect. I'm gonna stamp that down here at the bottom. And I'm going to use, let's see if I can grab um, real red. Yes. I'm going to use some real red ink to stamp that one at the bottom. Real red is perfect for Santa. So I'm just inking this up and I'm going to stamp it right down here. Cause he looks like he's saying that don't stop believing <laughs> all right so there we go we've got our stamp on there and we're gonna bring in some blends and color add a little bit of color to Santa you don't need to stress about coloring a lot but we should add some color so I'm gonna use my light real red no I should use dark we'll try dark okay it's important when you're when you're using blends to make sure you're not doing it over your layout. Pull your piece off and use it over grid paper because it will bleed through. So you want to definitely have something underneath your work surface. So let's color in his hat. Add a little bit of red to his hat. And I'm going to switch to my fine tip here. And I'm just going to add some color on here. Color his hat and then you can add a little bit to his arm. You don't need to go right off the side, but I'm just going to add a tiny bit here and the shoulder of his coat. There we go. And over here too, just to make it more complete, I'm just going to add some red over here. There we go. Okay, so we have a color for doing skin and it's called ivory ivory does a great job coloring in um, his the skin right to make it look natural so I'm going to use this on his hand and his finger if he's pointing at us and his nose and his all of his face okay I we'll just might as well just go right over his glasses because they're clear, right? <laughs> okay, so there we go. We've got that done. Now we can add some pool party. Let me grab some pool party or some balmy blue, maybe light balmy blue. Let's give Santa some blue eyes, right? A blue eyed Santa. Just add a little bit of blue and for his, his uh, hair, his beard, you could use some, I'm trying to find some smoky slate. I've had, I have my um, blends in a basket right now because, true story, I was using them upstairs. I took them upstairs, we were watching a movie, and this is what I do, I come down to my craft room and I just throw things in a basket and I take them with me. So they're not organized the way I like them to be. And we're going to have to do that after. I'm going to have to find my smoky slate. No, it's not here. Okay, so I would color maybe just a light 
dusting of smoky slate on his beard. And I might have left that up on my coffee table. Sorry, guys. Okay, so we're going to leave that. You can also add some Wink of Stella to his pom-pom and, and the, the cuff and, you know, the forehead or the top of his hat. So we're just going to leave him right now, but I will add maybe just a little bit of smoky slate to his beard later. Okay, so let's put that onto our mossy meadow layer. That's going to go on our layout. See how it bled through? That's what would end up on your layout or worse on your nice wooden kitchen table. You don't want that to bleed through because the alcohol based markers, you can't wipe that off. You can't get it off guys. So be very careful when you're using these markers to have something under your project. Okay, so let's bring back the layout. He's gonna sit down here and we're gonna finish off the left side. What do you guys think so far? Do you like the way this is turning out? Can you picture some of your your photos on here? You could put December daily photos on, on this layout. You know, if you're doing an elf on the shelf at your house, you could put your elf on the shelf pictures on here. Christmas means a little bit more, right? If you have an elf that visits you, well, you guys know <laughs> that does mean a lot, right? Those elves can be so much fun. Okay. So now we have space here. So this is what I do when I scrapbook. So I like to do my decorative stuff and then I put, you know, put things together and then I size up how much room do I have left? Okay, so I have seven inches by seven and a quarter. So we could do two photo mats here. I think that's what I wanna do. So I'm gonna do them seven inches Yep, seven inches wide, and I'm gonna pull in the colors that are featured in the designer series paper, right? So we have Mossy Meadow, Pear Pizzazz, and Real Red here. So we're gonna pull in some cardstock. I've got uh, Real Red, and I've got some Mossy Meadow here. Let's see. And I'm gonna just grab my paper cutter, and what did I say? I said seven and a half? Seven. Nope, seven inches. Okay, so seven inches. So let's make sure we've got our seven inches in length. So with the paper trimmer, has this awesome arm that opens right up. Can use that. And I'm gonna just, oh, look at that. It already is seven inches. Okay, and this one, my real red, I'm gonna cut that at seven inches. And my height, was seven and a half. So I'm gonna do three and a half, three and a half in uh, width, like this. Three and a half, and my mossy meadow is gonna be three and a half also. There we go. So those are long, kind of longer pieces, but when you scrapbook, you often cut your photos, right? You cut them because they are bigger than you need. There's background pieces that, you know, are there that you're like, okay, I can chop that out. Or you can take these layers and you can, uh, you can do like a photo collage. You could put two or three photos on here. Um, it gives you lots of options, but it's really about bringing all of those beautiful colors, the Stampin' Up! colors into your layout, tying it all together. So this is um, the ladies in my scrapbook club. This is what we do. I design the layout and then they get their pictures printed and they can visualize in the class what kind of photos they're gonna put on their layouts. So they could put two small photos here. They could put a bigger one up here. It's, you know, the possibilities are endless. Now I have a little bit of white space here. So this is what I tend to do. I'm like, okay, I don't really want, I wanna put something there because you know, I don't want any white space, right? So let's measure this. So this is three and three quarters. So I want something three and three quarters wide and about one and three quarters in height. So we could put paper, designer series paper. I really like pulling the, the different patterns in for the designer series paper. So let's do that. I really like this pattern. So I'm gonna put, I'm gonna cut a piece to fit there. So what did I say? Three and three quarters by one and three quarters. Let's see how that looks. 
So I'm going to cut that one and three quarters. by three and three quarters. And I'm sure if you have designer series paper at home, you have little bits in your packages, right? And it just, look at that. That just ties all of the colors together. I absolutely love it. And this paper is gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. Okay, so we're gonna stick this down and we're gonna say that the left side of my layout is done and it's just ready now for photos. Okay, there we go. Okay, so let's pull in now the right hand side. So I've got some more Whisper White here. Here's my base. This is my platform, I guess you'd call it. <laughs> and we're gonna put some, we're gonna use different colors and not different colors, but we're gonna use coordinating colors on this side. And what I have is a piece of real red, 11 inches by four and a half. I'm going to put that down here at the bottom, okay? I like to change things up often on the right-hand side of my layout. So I'm going to put a real red border, a big border at the bottom here. And we're going to put this, I'm going to try and leave the same amount of room all the way around like that. And then before I went on camera, I was doing some cutting with those hippo dies and I cut out some of these pieces here and I thought I would use those on my layout. So I'm, if you're just joining me, I'm using these stamp sets together to make this layout. So I have Don't Stop Believin' and I have Christmas Means More. So I really like this one. The best way to spread Christmas cheer is to sing loud for all to hear. It reminds me of Elf, <laughs> the movie, right? So I thought that one would fit on the, one of these layers. Um, also from this stamp set, I have to use this adorable elf. He is so cute wrapped up in his lights. And I also love the snowman, <laughs> the melting snowman. So we're going to put one of them on here. So I'm going to figure out now what I'm going to do with these layers. So let's move our background piece off to the side for a second and let's play with these pieces. So I have the elf here. I'm gonna stamp him onto one of these bigger pieces with Memento. So let's go ahead and do that. We'll stamp the elf on here. And we're gonna stamp also the uh, snowman that's melting, the poor little guy. Let's get him on a block here. <laughs> and we're gonna ink him up with Memento. And I think he's gonna have to go this way because of the, the width, he's wider. We'll press that down and there we go. So we have the snowman there and I've got my, my third piece right here that I'm gonna put that greeting from this one, the best way to spread Christmas cheer, singing loud for all to hear. So let's grab that one, I hope it fits. I think it will. Oh yeah, that'll fit. All right, so I think I'll stamp that in Memento as well. Uh, grab another block. Good thing I have lots of blocks <laughs> because it's nice to have the stamps mounted because we all know what happens if they're not on a block, right? They stick to something that they're not supposed to and that can be frustrating when you lift up your paper cutter and your stamp is stuck to it. It's happened to me. You guys saw it. <laughs> okay, so there's my greeting on there. Let's bring in my chamois and clean these up. I have a little small one here. I did cut that one purposely because I knew I had a small greeting. This one here, sadly, first Frosty's first hot chocolate, cho hot cocoa turned out to be his last. I love that, that's so funny. So I'm gonna stamp that on this smaller piece down here. There we go. Now I'm done with the stamps, I think. Oh, actually, no, I've got another one here. This one here is don't get your tinsel in a tangle. <laughs> so that really goes with the elf. 
So I have a stitched rectangle, and this one, it actually fits perfectly. I haven't stamped it yet, but I did line it up um, over top with the die before I cut out the, the cardstock. And let's stamp, don't get your tinsel in a tangle. There we go. So that's ready to go. So if you kind of know the stamps that you want to use on your layout, you can do all your stamping like this, and then you can assemble, right? Because um, it's kind of a good idea to do that because then you don't have ink pads open next to your layout and, you know, accidents can happen, right? We all know that. Okay, so let's do some layering. Let's layer this down onto the background cardstock pieces. So I've got this one going on to Mossy Meadow. And these are all going to be fine just on their own like that. Um, I do need to color my, my gorgeous little elf here. So let's bring in some dye, some um, blends to have my ivory. So let's color his little face and his hands quickly here. Squeaky. <laughs> so cute. Okay. Let me just... Uh zoom in here if you want to see what I'm doing for coloring. I'm just going to color, finish coloring in that little elf. So let's give him some crumb cake hair. He's got a little bit of wisp of hair sticking out up the top up there. Whoops. And I forgot his ears. I have to color his ears in ivory as well. There we go. Color his ears. And I'm going to color his leg. His legs are sticking through here. So let's Give those a little bit of uh, ivory color <laughs> and his neck. There we go. And I'm going to bring in my ballet blue and give him some blue eyes too. And we're going to give him a green. I have just jade. I thought I'd try that one out for his elf outfit. Let's color his hat. So cute. And I think I'll color all of his um, outfit green. He's going to be completely green with his elf suit. Could do some red on there if you wanted to. Could give him some red boots. He's got little elf boots on. Oh, I can't believe I waited till now to play with him. Oh my heavens, he's cute. Okay. So he's got a green outfit. Now you could also highlight it. You may add some highlighting later with the darker um, Just Jade. I just like to do some like shading. So this, I'm just gonna show you on his hat what I would do. So just add a little bit of shading and then with the dark and come back in over it with the light and then I blend where that dark meets the light. And that just makes it pop a little bit more. Okay, so we've got his outfit. Let's give him some red boots. So we've got real red and I actually do like cherry cobbler too for um, coloring red. So let's do cherry cobbler for his little elf boots. The pointy toes. Okay. There we go. So we've got him colored, his body and his boots. Let's do the light, the string of lights now. So we're gonna use multi colors, right? So let's do a few red, just random, pick the red ones. And so red and green and yellow. I'm gonna do mango melody, maybe some pumpkin pie. And for the green, I'm going to grab Granny Apple Green. Granny Apple Green would look nice on there. So I think, let's see. Let's add a yellow light up here and a yellow light down here. Granny Apple Green one over here, here, and here. And I've got two left, and I'll color those pumpkin pie. There we go. Whoops. <laughs> And it flies off my desk. Okay, there we go. <laughs> oh, the funny things that happen. Okay, so 
I'm going to bring in now some, let's do soft suede for the, the string, the string of lights and the little, the little plug part, just to finish it off. I'm just going to go all the way around and follow that string of lights. I don't think you need to do this, but like I said, it's my first time playing with this one, so I might as well color it um, completely. And it's going on my layout, so I want to. When I open this album and I look at this layout, I re will remember how fun it was to make this layout and to color and, and how adorable this little elf is. <laughs> Okay, so I'm just coming up here and finish off the string of lights and the little plugs. Okay, there we have it. What do you guys think? Do you like him? He's so cute. <laughs> I love the look on his face. It's like, oh my gosh, I'm tied up in these lights. Okay, so let's flip that over. Um, actually, let's bring back the layout first before I put glue on things. I'm going to bring back my the right-hand side of my layout here. Oh, I forgot to color my Frosty. Oh dear. Okay, so quickly, <laughs> I have to give Frosty some color. So I've got orange for his nose. Let's add some soft suede here for his cocoa, which he's spilling out there. Let's color the water. Let's see what balmy blue looks like. Yeah, okay, so he's melting, so let's make him balmy blue. Poor Frosty. Gonna color in him in with. Uh, let's use the thicker side of the blend. And there we go. Uh, what else? We need some green for his the holly on his hat. Let's give him a little red stripe on his hat and red dots for the holly. Um, what do I have here? The light soft suede. Let's just color in those stick arms that are floating. There we go. And his hat. Okay, so for his hat, we're going to use a dark color. Let's use basic black. I've got, I just grabbed the light. Let's see what that looks like. I'll color in his little top hat. Oh yeah, he's so cute. There we go. Okay, so there's Frosty. And we'll leave his little mug white. Okay, so let's bring back our layout. So here at the bottom of this side, I thought we could put these on here. Um, let's see, maybe like this. Let's put the snowman in the middle. Yes, okay. So we're gonna put the greeting here Put the snowman here, put the elf there, and then it's just embellishing with these greetings. So we're going to put some glue. Let's flip them all over and put glue on the back. And these pieces I think I will put on with dimensionals. So let's flip them over. And we'll put dimensionals and get it all ready to go. And then it's just a matter of assembly, putting it down. Okay. So these um, stamp sets you guys that I'm using today are in the mini catalog that's available right now, but it's only available until January 4th. And they have not released the um, retired list yet, but if you like these stamp sets, I would not wait. I would grab them so that you can use them. Well, it's not too late to use them for this Christmas, but you will have these in your collection because they don't always keep all of the stamp sets. So it'd be sad to see you miss out. So if you, if you like these sets, you want to nab them as quickly as you can. We're going to put the snowman up here like that. And then this part, sadly... Frosty's first cocoa turned out to be his last. I'll put that underneath him. And let's put this part underneath the little elf who's got him his tinsel in a tangle. <laughs> there we go. So we've got that at the bottom of my right-hand side of my layout. So now we have room up here to put, obviously we need to put photos on this, on this layout. So let's see. Let's bring in some more of the designer series paper here. We have... 
some di different strips, so I use that one on that side. I could put a strip across here like that, but I always, always use my ruler. When I'm scrapbooking, I use my ruler to see, I do want to fit photos, of course, on here. Um, this is a little bit too wide for me. What am I leaving myself with up here? So I'm going to leave, I'm going to trim this down to be one inch by 11 inches, and that'll just give me a little bit of a border on there. So let's move this to the 11 inch mark. And I'm going to trim it to one inch. So I like to use this side of my trimmer because I want to use my hand to hold it down. So I'm going to use the increment on the uh, on the right hand side of the trimmer. So there's a little one inch strip. So I'm going to put that onto my layout right here just above my real red piece. I'm kind of working backwards a little bit, working from the bottom of the layout to the top. It all works, right? Whatever gets it done. Okay, so this piece is going to go right at the top here. With a little bit of a gap, just to break it up a little bit. Okay, so now what have I got left? I've got about five and a half. Yep, and 11. So that's perfect because I do like to print five by seven photos. So we could put a five by seven here if we wanted to. Five by seven, like a portrait or a landscape uh, mat. I think I'm gonna do that. Five and a quarter by seven and a quarter. So I'm gonna bring in, I think, Mossy Meadow. Let's grab some mossy meadow and we're going to cut it five and a quarter by seven and a quarter. Five and a quarter. Actually, I'm going to do it this way. If you do seven and a quarter across the top, then you can get two pieces when you flip your cardstock. Seven and a quarter by five and a quarter. And the re reason I chose that measurement is because then when I print a five by seven photo, I can put it right on there and I will have a little bit of a border going all the way around. So let's glue that down. And we've got one more little spot to fill in on our layout here. And I'll bring in my trusty ruler again to see what I've got left to work with. So I've got uh, about three and a half and I'm gonna stick to the same measurement. So three and a half by five and a quarter. So. I have not used, which patterns have I not used? I haven't used the stripes, I haven't used the dots, I haven't used this one or this one. So I have lots to choose from when I look at my designer series paper and you can break it up. So it doesn't have to be a single piece. It's five and a half by three and a half. Okay, so three and a half I kind of want to use two pieces of paper because I want to give all the, I want to put all the paper on. <laughs> so I'm going to decide. I'm going to do these two. I like these two patterns. So let's bring in my paper cutter. You need a paper cutter when you're scrapbooking for sure. So we're going to do three and a half. Trim three and a half. And let's go to... All right, let's bring this back one more time here. Three and a half, and I have five and a quarter to work with. So I'm just gonna go with two inches. Let's see how that works. Or two, mm, two and one eighth. Two and one eighth. So three and a half by two and one eighth. Yes, okay, so two and one eighth. Two and one eight is easy. It's just the first little increment past the two inches by three and a half. Or, oh my gosh, I need more coffee. What was this again? <laughs> yes, it was three and a half. Okay, three and a half. All right, so let's get rid of our scrap paper here and bring back the layout and we can finish this off with these two, whoops, fun pieces of de designer series paper. So this one will go here and this one can go up here. I do have a little bit of a gap there, but that's okay. I can add something else there. All right, so 
let's go ahead and put those down. Could have went a little bit wider if you wanted to. But that's the beauty of, of scrapbooking and paper crafting, right? Like, no two pieces ever look the same. And you can, you can always fix things. You can always add embellishments, right? Okay, so there we have it. We've got two more pieces of the paper, and I love how Stampin' Up! papers always coordinate, and you get that nice matching color. Now, there is a little bit of a gap here. I'm trying to decide what to put there. Let's see how much of a gap do I have. I have about three quarters of an inch or half, yeah, three quarters of an inch. I could bring in this other pattern. I'm gonna do that, three quarters of an inch. Just a tiny little strip, right? So let's just line up the paper cutter. Three quarters of an inch, and I know it was three and a half because I measured it twice, <laughs> three times probably. There we go. So I'm gonna put that little tiny strip of designer series paper there. Oh, I love how that looks. Okay, so that just adds a little bit more depth, dimension to the layout. The more patterns you add, I find the better. And when you stick to one package of designer series paper, and Stampin' Up! tells us what colors are featured in the paper, so you can just choose those colors and you can design your layout just based on the colors that Stampin' Up! gave us, right? Happy pages. Oh, thank you, Linda. Yes, they are happy pages. <laughs> so I'm going to bring them all in now and give myself some room here. And this is a scrapbook layout, you guys, for Christmas. It's ready to go, ready for me to print some pictures, take some pictures <laughs> over Christmas and put, you know, I can picture a family photo going there, a couple of, maybe four more photos down here. And this is my scrapbook layout that I made today on the fly with you guys. <laughs> and I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope it wasn't too painful for you to watch me measure and cut. And But this is the process. This is how I design scrapbook layouts using stamps, ink, and paper. And um, I just absolutely love, I can't wait to get pictures on there and see how it looks. Okay, so I'm going to flip you around here. <laughs> I wore my red shirt today for this Christmas layout. I hope you had fun watching and I hope you'll come back and join me again tomorrow. I have another scrapbook layout for you tomorrow. <laughs> Thank you, Heidi. Thanks, Patty. Have a wonderful Thursday. Stay warm, stay safe, stay healthy, and I will see you tomorrow. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.